Real quick before we begin the video, we recently reached our goal of 10,000 subscribers and I have some news and announcements regarding that at the end of the video. Enjoy. Enemies in the Legend of Zelda series are an absolute must and one of the most crucial parts of making the fantasy adventure games a make or break title. I personally feel like enemies in the Zelda series have slowly been getting overlooked, especially in recent years, as they have such a normal and everyday part of the games now. But in reality, they play a huge role in the overworld, dungeons, quests, and quite literally, the entire game. They create a threat, excitement, and add challenge to the game. From the terrifying and nightmare sources such as the Re-Deads, Wallmasters, and Deadhands, to more classic staples in the series such as the Bokoblins, Stalfos, and bubblins. But something changed with the enemies recently. With the release of Breath of the Wild, we saw the developers take a much more casual approach to the enemies. The game had a fairly lackluster variety and not many of them posed a real threat. A good way to describe the enemy department in Breath would be basic. Instead of having a huge wide variety of different enemies, we got a smaller set of enemies that had different variations representing their difficulty. Along with that, there was a notable increase in the amount of one-hit enemies, some of which in past games actually took more than one hit to defeat. Basically, the enemies got a lot easier and more basic, but with the sequel to Breath of the Wild currently on the way, there is an amazing opportunity to reintroduce some of Zelda's classic and well-known fan-favorite enemies. With that in mind, I put together a list of the top 5 enemies that didn't appear in Breath of the Wild that I would love to see make a return in the sequel. And just to go the extra mile, this isn't just a list of my favourite enemies in general. I've taken into consideration how these enemies would work in the environment of the sequel, their abilities, and if they would make a realistic fit for the world of what we can assume is going to be like Breath of the Wild. So, without further ado, here is my top 5 enemies that need to return in the Breath of the Wild sequel. Coming in at the opening number 5 spot, Dynalphos. These assassin-like lizards are the bigger and stronger older brothers to the Lazalfos. Both enemies being very similar in looks and attacks, but the Dynalphos being a significantly stronger one. The exact iteration of them I'd want to see make a return is how they appeared in Twilight Princess. We find them inside the Temple of Time this time around. <laughs> I'm hilarious. And we can see that they act and look just like Lizalfos, but covered in armor and equipped with better weapons. These enemies offer a very quick and agile challenge. The type of enemy you quite literally can't take your eyes off. They think smart and attack smart. The Nalfos will wait for you to put your guard down or lose focus, then attack. They use swift and tricky movements, accompanied by a shield for protection and strength and a blade or axe to strike you with. I believe the Dynalphos would work really well inside dungeons and caves in the sequel. They are hunters, like a velociraptor if you will, but unlike the raptor, they prefer to hunt alone or distanced, unlike their weaker counterpart the Lazalfos who attack in groups or pairs. That fact alone just shows how the Dynalphos are beaming with confidence and up for a fight. It would be so cool if in the sequel we are venturing through a cave or even underground, and without knowing it, we walk into the den or lair of a group of Dynalphos, have a cage-like door drop behind us, trapping us in an enclosed space and forcing us into a battle against some fast and agile assassins that are masters of a blade. All of that is why the Dynalphos take my opening number 5 spot. Now for number 4, Redeads. I couldn't make a list talking about some of the best Zelda enemies without bringing up the Redeads. These demonic, mummy-looking zombie creatures are basically just that. They are the living dead, which isn't anything new to the Zelda series, but they are without a doubt one of, if not the most terrifying and frightening enemy in the series. They move very slow and don't seem all that intimidating, other than their chilling looks, but don't let that fool you. Get too close to one of these zombified creatures and you will be subjected to one of the biggest nightmare sources in the 90s and early 2000s. The horrifying Redead Scream.
If these things get too close to you, they will jump and latch onto you, choking you, shaking you and biting into you. You might ask, how can they catch you if they are so slow? Well, that unsettling screech they let out is so loud and horrific and high pitched that it causes poor old Link to freeze up and clamp over his ears with his hands in fear. This gives the Redeads time to attack. Given the darker tone the sequel to Breath looks to be taking, it could be a perfect fit if we could get the return of the Redeads. An important part of the game is going to take place underground from what it seems from the trailer. So it would be a perfect but yet terrifying fit if we were to come across some Redeads wandering around the underworld of Hyrule, just waiting for some innocent victims like Link and Princess Zelda to walk onto their grounds. So for my number 4 pick, I would like to see the Redeads come back to the series. Next up, Wolfos. Now before you go after me and tell me they are just wolves, I know, but I do want to see them return for various reasons. In Breath of the Wild we did see wolves make an appearance, but they weren't really that hostile or aggressive. Sure they would attack you if you invade their space, but what wild hunting animal wouldn't? So I would like to see the more edgy and dark canines of the series, these bloodthirsty wolves that can be found in dark places like deep within the woods or atop the mountains, return in the sequel. They tend to appear out of nowhere, sometimes from beneath the ground. They stare you down with their bright glowing green eyes that are radiating an intimidating glare deep into your soul. Then like a pack of wild dogs, they pounce. Similar to the easier enemies of the series, Wolfos attack in groups, but the difference with these furry threats is that they have a lot of intelligence, and I mean a lot. Wolfos have planned out and strategized attack patterns that can quickly become a lot to handle and cope with. They like to run around a little, test you out to see if you'll strike at the first opportunity given to you, and once they have sussed you out, they'll attack. Their group attacks can be very overwhelming, and this is what makes them such a good and also difficult enemy to fight. Alone, the Wolfos aren't a very strong enemy, but in a group, they can do some serious damage. Given the fact Breath of the Wild has a huge focus on its nature-filled world, and the sequel likely will too, I see Wolfos as a perfect fit for an enemy to return. Just imagine yourself out alone at night in Hyrule Field or the woodlands of Nakluda, and suddenly a pack of bloodthirsty Wolfos come out of nowhere, with the radiant glowing eyes locking onto you. That is exactly why the Wolfos have to return in the Breath of the Wild sequel. In at the runners up, number 2 spot, Big Octo. Now this pick is a little different from the rest. Big Octo, or Giant Octorok, whatever you want to call this colossal marine life monster, is without a doubt one of the most intimidating and epic enemies in the series. Big Octo is more often than not considered to be more of a mini boss or overworld boss, but an enemy nonetheless. Big Octo can be found in Ocarina of Time, Majora's Mask, and with its most iconic and in my opinion, best appearance coming in The Wind Waker. In Ocarina of Time, Big Octo acts as the mini boss to Jabba Jabu's belly. In Majora's Mask, Big Octo is blocking a passageway in the Southern Swamp. And in the Wind Waker, multiple Big Octos can be found out and about within the Blue Seas, and it's the version from the Wind Waker I would love to see return the most. In Wind Waker, you could be sailing with blue waters, clear skies, and a beautiful sunset or sunrise, then all of a sudden be sucked into strong and choppy waters, see the skies go dark and gloomy, and then witness a gigantic colossal octopus emerge from the depths of the sea in terrifying fashion. Any sailor's nightmare. Big Octo is the Kraken of the Zelda series, and whilst a very large and extreme enemy, I feel like it could work in the Breath of the Wild sequel under certain circumstances. We know the sequel will include the same Hyrule from the first game, so it's very likely our explorability will have to be expanded upon. It's near confirmed that we will be venturing beneath the ground, but there is also the chance of sea exploration and travelling further out from the limits of Breath's Hyrule. So if we were to get some sea exploration, the Big Octo would be an amazing overworld boss to bring back. We got the Hinox, Lionels, and other large scale enemies to act as overworld bosses in Breath, so why not expand upon them in the sequel and bring the elements into the battle too, the water. If that's all too much then hell, even just the smaller but just as difficult Big Octo from Ocarina and Majora's would work just fine for an enemy. So that's my second place runner up, the Big Octo.
Before I reveal my number one pick, here are a few honorable mentions. The Air Alphos in Twilight Princess, the Beemos from all the games they've appeared in, the Dead Hands from Ocarina of Time, and the Pose. Number 1. The Dark Knight. This absolute powerhouse of a knight is by far my all-time favourite enemy and all-time favourite mini-boss in the entire series. This robust titan of an enemy is an all-round perfect foe, housing a massive and muscular build covered by thick black armour, equipped with an enormous sword and shield, and most importantly, being the source of many inappropriate jokes for a 12-year-old. The Dark Knight. It has it all, basically. Appearing in Link's Awakening, Four Swords, Four Swords Adventures and Twilight Princess, with the best iteration and one I'd want to see return being the Dark Knight found in Twilight Princess. We meet this absolute unit as the mini-boss in the Temple of Time, and what a tremendous battle that was. You enter the room to see what seems like a suit of armour, but no. The suit of armour begins to move, and before you know it, you're in a one-on-one -on -one battle with the mighty Dark Knight. The Dark Knight fights very similar to Link himself, but almost as if Link was on steroids and masked in a thick coat of armour. The Dark Knight in Twilight Princess is kind of like the Shadow Link of that game in a way, a dark threat who fights just like Link, although the Dark Knight does tend to be a lot more grounded and slow, standing its ground and picking its moments to unleash a stone cold blow to Link. I don't even need to say much to be honest, the footage of the Dark Knight speaks for itself. I personally believe the Dark Knight would bring a whole new dynamic to the Breath of the Wild sequel, and make for some really intense battles. I don't think they should be open and free to leave battles like the current Breath of the Wild overall bosses and enemies, as they were kind of easy. I'd love to see this warrior return in traditional fashion, and have parts of the game akin to the Lionel fights at Hyrule Castle in Breath, but with no escape. Put them in dungeons or the overworld, as long as they're in the game, I'm happy. So the enemy I would like to see return the most in the Breath of the Wild sequel is the Dark Knight. Thanks a ton for checking out the video, I really hope you enjoyed it, and be sure to let me know some of the enemies you'd like to see return in the Breath of the Wild sequel down below in the comments. As mentioned at the beginning of the video, we recently reached 10,000 subscribers and I honestly can't thank you enough. Reaching that incredible number is something that back in 2016 when I started making these videos, I would have never imagined reaching. <clears throat> Old cliche thank you speech. No worries. <clears throat> Jokes aside, it really does mean the world to me, and I'm still processing the fact that I've managed to reach the goal, and that 10,000 of you have enjoyed a video enough to hit that subscribe button. From the bottom of my heart, thank you so, so much. As for the news and announcements, I'm happy to announce that I will be starting some serious work on merch, as requested. I hope to have it done by the end of the year at the latest, but I'll have further updates on that in the coming weeks. Secondly, and probably what most of you are more interested in, my promised face reveal. I said I'd do this if I ever reached 10,000 subscribers, and a promise is a promise. So, here is my mug. I hope you're all happy. Anyways, a huge thank you goes out to all my amazing Patreon supporters. So, special thanks to Hexovian, Lenarco1, Keitala, Karika, Sephira Sky, Daniel Kilman, Nerislov13, Barky Doggo, Arlie Quinn, M, Chris Simpson, Andrew, and Brett Harris. Your support really does help me to keep making these videos as often as possible. Thank you. Again, thank you all so, so very much for 10,000 subscribers and checking out the video. And until the next time, I've been Hyrule Gamer.